Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about a major sudden stratospheric warming event and a polar vortex displacement that will send cold Arctic air pouring into the United States. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media. All right, so let's get started. Here is an overall pick of what a stratospheric warming event looks like up in the Arctic. I mean, Arctic temperatures typically are around 80 to 90 degrees below zero. But when you get that sudden spike, you're talking a rise of anywhere from upwards to 70 degrees, reaching temperatures at almost zero in the Arctic Circle. And you kind of get a, a kind of a transfer of that Arctic air down to the surface. Now, these temperatures could spike, you know, all the way up to 50 miles so it takes a while it takes several weeks for these events to kind of play out but eventually it'll send some cold arctic air into the united states here's kind of the different layers of the atmosphere uh we, we live on the troposphere and when you have a, a spike in the arctic that'll go through the stratosphere we're talking anywhere from 30 almost 50 miles up so it'll actually take a little bit to kind of filter down in the surface and kind of send it in pieces. And I'll show you this, how this is all gonna play out over the next maybe several weeks. So here's what's happening right now. Here's a visual of what's going on in the North Pole. You can see we've had that downward spike, but then we got that upward spike of you know temperatures rising anywhere from negative 70 almost to negative 20 so we've almost seen a 50 degree jump in the arctic as of late and i still don't think this is actually kind of peaked out here's a current look of what's happening in the stratosphere right now you can see this polar vortex kind of it's kind of splitting you can kind of see it this warmer air rising up in the arctic and these colder lobes of uh, arctic frigid air is kind of breaking off and these and that's what's sh going on in the uh the purple shaded area and as these kind of break off this one polar lobe piece will kind of first initiate and break off into europe and that'll start showing up some of the arctic air and eventually the united states will follow now we didn't we didn't see one of these last year but the but the year before that and uh january of 2019 there was a sudden, a major sudden uh, stratospheric warming event in that year, and it was almost kind of following the same timeline. It happened right around this time frame, but it didn't actually peak until January 30th and 31st into the United States. So I'll show you how that, all that kind of played out. But here's kind of a little bit more of a visual on what a normal vortex looks like. I mean, it's pretty much symmetri symmetrical. We have not seen the polar vortex as of this winter as of yet, uh, because it's been all bundled up in the Arctic. And then as it kind of splits, you can kind of see these polar lobes kind of split off, sending pulses of colder air. And, but then sometimes you almost have a, a displacement. And that's what I think we're going to be start at like initially happening as a displ displacement in the polar vortex where it kind of gets like, say, elongated. So we'll start to see pieces of frigid air start to pulse down into the United States. And eventually, I think we'll get another surge and a more massive surge uh, later as we get into January. Now, here's another look at it. When we have a very strong polar vortex, it's essentially just kind of just building over the arctic it's not there's nothing to displace it there's nothing to send cold arctic air i mean typically we've been in a, in a strong when we were in a strong vortex all of last year but a lot of times when we have a stratospheric warming event that'll cause a, a little bit more of a displacement to start to see a little bit more wavy or elongated in the polar vortex and as this kind of uh, gets more elongated it'll start sending some of that cold frigid air first into Europe and then I think eventually it'll go into uh, the United States. So the last time this happened was back in January uh, 30th, 31st in 2019 when we also had a major sudden stratospheric warming event. Now today is the January the 7th and this kind of peaked out so you can see it took 
three or four weeks for it to peak out, but it peaked out in a big way because it sent sometimes all time cold temperatures. I mean, some of these are all time cold temperatures and record cold to the uh, central and eastern uh, part of the U.S., especially in the northeast into uh in places like minnesota you can see man we, these are wind chills during that time frame of 60 below zero and that that colder arctic air extended all the way down into illinois and that's when you hit your record all-time record cold temperature in illinois of 38 below zero so that was the last time one of these events uh took place and that potentially is something that could be on the table later on in the january so Let's take a look at the teleconnections and what's happening in the up, upper atmosphere. Here is the Arctic Oscillation, which is your AO. It continues to remain negative, and that will continue to remain negative all the way for the next two weeks, January 21st. And then you have the NAO, which is the North Atlantic Oscillation, also trending and staying negative, uh, you know, port, keeping that colder air and that's why we're seeing some of those southern, southern type snow events setting up in this La Nina because of this ongoing uh, Arctic Oscillation and negative oscillation being negative. Now let's extend the view of the PNA as well as the EPO. Now we haven't seen a, a an Arctic surge because the EPO has been predominantly uh, positive at so far this winter. But as you can see, as we get towards uh, the second half of January, the middle of January, you can start to see kind of the trend line of trajecting downward and it turns negative. A lot of these times it needs a trigger. So there's been plenty of colder air building. So I do think on top of the, the stratospheric warming event and the AO and the NAO negative, once the EPO, go, EPO goes negative, that's when it'll send the signal of much colder air into the United States. And you can see the PNA, it, it shows also it's going negative, but I'm not actually buying this scenario with the EPA go, EPO going negative. I do think this will correct over time as this strat warming event will come more into play and take this more positive, building the ridge over the western uh, parts of the U.S., and pouring in that colder air into the central and two thirds eastern part of uh, the US going forward in the second half of January. So now let's kind of take a look at the bigger picture. This is a picture of Siberia and East Asia. Currently, we're talking temperatures 20, 30 degrees below zero. It maxes out at 52 degrees uh, below zero. But as this is coming out, of the uh, strat warming event you can see these really start to intensify by january the 16th so we're talking you know as this comes out 10 days from now this these colder temperatures really start to intensify over the are over siberia or have a wide swath of 20 30 40 50 degrees below zero even this part of the country you're talking negative 72 degrees this is some extremely cold arctic air and as this is building this will send a piece down to into europe but with the epa epo going negative that will set the stage for the cross polar flow pour, you know tapping into this colder air from siberia and pouring it into the eastern part of, of the u.s here's europe and this is by the 14th so by the 14th of January, it's starting to show those 20 to 20 degrees below plus average temperature start to appear in Europe. So it'll first hit Europe and then afterwards it'll hit uh, the United States. So now let's take a look at this. Uh, this is the European weekly model. So I found this really quite interesting. So if we take the seven day average from January 14th to uh, January 28th, so coming up in the second half of January, you can see the stage is starting to set up where we've got a Western-based negative NAO. We've got a ridge building, starting to build over the Northwest, eventually getting into Alaska. We've got a negative EPAO, and then we also have a negative AO. So this is a prime type setup for a cross polar, vo uh, polar uh, vortex event cross-polar uh, event setting the stage for 
a colder air to propagate into the U.S. and really kind of set up like a conveyor belt of heavy major snowstorms for the eastern uh, part of the U.S. Now, ironically, this looks a lot like these anomalies that I kind of put together for you guys. Now, back in, if we put all this together of the teleconnections of the negative NAO, the AO, the negative EPO, and the positive PNA, we find these four teleconnections in January and February back in 1958, 1970, 1985, 2010, 2011. For Jan this is what the pattern looked like for January and February of those anomaly layers. And look at the, the almost identical setup that will kind of take place in the second half of January. So now you may recall back in 1985, one of those anomalies, that's when we had that very cold uh, Arctic outbreak for the United States. And that sent a wave of colder temperatures. A lot of these are all-time all low temperatures, but single digits all the way down into the deep south of Texas, pouring into even Louisiana and and uh, you know Mississippi and Alabama, we had a, a ton of negatives down in you know Kentucky, ne negative twenty in the Ohio Valley. So this was a, a major Arctic outbreak and that anomaly a year. But as we go into the sixteenth, so we sent that we saw that uh, colder phase start to initiate in Europe first on the fourteenth, and the latest uh, GFS model by the January sixteenth is starting to show that cross polar flow of air start to really start to creep in into the United States on the second half of uh, January. And I still think this will build as we go deeper uh, into January. So if we take a look at the 500 millibar anomaly, even two weeks uh, from then, which would be the end of January going into the first part of February, it still has a much snowier pattern and colder pattern really kind of locking in it then we've got that western ridge over uh the, the northwest uh, that building over alaska and we've got this ridge building up top over the negative nao and it's just almost a conveyor belt of uh systems that will kind of set the stage for a much colder uh, and snowier pattern in the second half of of winter so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching i feel like i give i kind of give you an update on on how the second half of winter could potentially uh play out so i am definitely expecting a much colder uh pattern and a snowier pattern as we as we go towards uh the middle of january and extend into the second half of winter so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm